These are the Pico Motion Trackers. Cheap, easy to set up, and surprisingly usable. And yes, I know. Every single video on YouTube about VR full body trackers is like, whoa guys, these trackers are so cheap and amazing. And no, these ones are actually cheap and actually good. C kind of, it's complicated. These trackers will work on any Pico headset from the Neo 3 to the Pico 4 Ultra. You can get them from Amazon and some retailers in the UK for about 80 pounds, but I got mine on AliExpress for 60 pounds. And yes, before you ask, these will not work on any of the Quest headsets, anything except Pico's headsets. I'm getting that out of the way now. These are IMU trackers, so similar technology to what you'd see in a Switch Joy-Con or the community-led Slime VR project. Yes, we'll get back to that. But Slime VR trackers come in sets of five. How the hell did Pico manage to do it with only two? Well, that's quite simple, actually. They cheated. Because these are first-party peripherals made by the same company as the headset, they just interface directly with the headset. It uses the same cameras that it uses for tracking the controllers to locate and calibrate the trackers. And that's what makes these trackers stand out to me. They are, hands down, the best experience I've had with any VR tracker. Pico gave these that first-party accessory feel that we haven't seen in VR since, I don't know, I guess that gun controller for the PSVR 1? Pairing and setting up the trackers is super quick and easy. And for standalone use, these just work. I mean, you can't even calibrate them in VR chat because it just works with them at a system level. This is a kind of end-to-end -end integration and ease of use that you just don't see in VR hardware these days. And look, I know this is not going to appeal to everyone watching this. A lot of you enjoy tinkering around with open source projects, DIY shit, and I think that is awesome. However, a lot of people aren't. Think of the questies. Imagine you have a friend who's vaguely interested in VR chat, but they don't want to spend lots of money and time setting up base stations or strapping loads of trackers to themselves. These Pico trackers could be just what they need to just hop into VR chat, figure out what it's all about with full body immersion, so they inevitably end up developing alcohol poisoning or gender dysphoria. I think I fucking nailed that. You know, for as much as Zuck likes to go on about social VR and the metaverse, this right here is something that will actually help grow social VR beyond its current hardcore user base. And it's baffling to me that Meta just has nothing at all to compete with this. Sure, Vive have their own accessories, most notably those wrist trackers I wish someone else would clone. Hell, you could even make an argument for these trackers being quite similar to what the Vive Ultimate trackers could have been. But the Vive Ultimate trackers were like £500, and they only work with like two headsets, which are like £1,000 each, and no one's buying those headsets. By comparison, a used Pico 4 costs basically the same as a used Quest 2. And sure, Pico's App Store may be underpopulated, but Vive App Store is a total ghost town. Pico's headsets now genuinely have a really strong use case for someone who doesn't yet have a headset and only cares to try out VR chat. Or, you know, if you just hate meta, which... Yeah, I, I do not blame you for that. But shut up, shut up, shut up. I don't care about any of that. I only want to know how good is the tracking. Oh, it's good, all right. Or at least good enough. As I said earlier, this is only two IMU sensors. So there's a lot more guesswork done than something like Slime, which has five points to build up a skeleton of your body. This is only two. So it's much closer to standable in terms of estimation compared to Slime, which is a much closer estimation. And then Vive trackers are just actual tracking. So it's somewhere in between, but it can get pretty good results. When you're stood up, standing around, just kind of hanging, chatting, what I do for most of these videos, um, these trackers work great. I would honestly consider them to be on par with slimes. For something a lot more intense like dancing, you do lose a lot of the precision you'd get with Vive trackers and the like, or a lot of the nuance that you'd get with like 11 points of slime tracking. But it is a lot better than if you were to just use your headset and controllers and VR chat's default IK or if you were to use a camera-based tracking system, which just does not have the capabilities of tracking you doing fast-paced movements like dancing. Again, they're more of an entry-level option for people who want to give it a go than people who want to be recording high-level YouTube videos with them. One thing that's worth noting is like anything else in life, your mileage may vary with this. My avatar that I use for these videos is pretty much proportioned the same as me. So, where my feet pretty much line up with where my feet actually go. However, uh, this avatar can't even blink, let alone do face tracking. So when I want to show that off, I switch to my Miku avatar. I find that with this model, the legs are just so much longer that um, when I hadn't set up the arm versus height ratio properly, my trackers were often like here, as opposed to down at the floor where they should be. 
And even when they are, it still just looks a bit weird. And like if I raise them up, it kind of clips inwards and it just doesn't exactly look right. And that's just how IMU trackers work. Even if I was using Vives, the ratios would still be an issue. All right, that's enough of this. Back to my normal model. Dude, I swear my voice went up by like an entire octave just then. Once you get to more demanding poses like sitting or especially lying down, the two IMU trackers and the algorithm really get pushed up against their limits. Pretty much any issue that you would have heard about with Slime VR, yeah, you can expect to see a lot more of that. It's worth saying, even though this is like objectively worse than Slime or especially Vive trackers, it hasn't stopped me from using it. Being able to express that I'm sitting down to everyone around me is genuinely such a great thing to have for VR chat. And even if, you know, it's a bit buggy and my legs clip through the chairs a bit, it's still way better than if I was only in half body. If you want to see a more detailed look at the tracking, there's a much more in-depth video talking about that aspect of these made by Richard Vigorovsky, the only bigger Pico shell than I am. Hello there. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Damn it. Oh, and on the topic of other YouTubers covering these trackers, I want to quickly mention, uh, this guy. Just ignore him. I don't normally like to talk shit on other creators, but I think it's quite fair to say that these videos mostly exist to clickbait people into thinking these trackers are way worse than they actually are. With such great titles as No Six Door? No, they have Six Door, all right. They track six degrees of freedom. Hmm and bad for EPR, which, to be fair, is a valid and quite popular use case for VR full body, which, as established in one of my previous videos, I have not partaken in. But yeah, no, I would honestly just ignore these videos, especially considering he mostly uses them to shill his own slime VR clones. And listen, I don't want to come off as a shill for Pico here. I've not been paid anything for this video, and these trackers do actually have legitimate problems, just not the ones this guy's talking about. So let's get on to those. The biggest problem with these trackers is drift, which is the case for pretty much any IMU-based tracking solution, but because there's only two physical points of reference, they drift a lot quicker than others. This is most prevalent when either sitting or lying down. Your hip will basically just drift out, and it looks kind of weird. Uh, generally, I find sitting kind of getting up, and then sitting back down again does reset it, but obviously it's annoying, because if you had slimes, it would drift a lot less, and if you had vibes, it would just be fine. Now, Pico software does support using a third tracker on your hip, and it apparently does reduce this drift by quite a lot. Uh, the only thing is, they only sell them in packs of two. Never mind, apparently you can buy individual ones on AliExpress. The only thing is, uh, they don't, like, have a waist strap. You can just buy the one for the feet with the, uh, the feet strap. So, if you want, you can, but I feel like the Questies aren't going to be going on to AliExpress to buy a single one and jerry-rigging their own strap. That's for the enthusiasts, and like I said, these trackers are for the Questies. Now, these issues were pretty bad at launch, but credit to Pico, they're actually pretty good at supporting their hardware, at least ones newer than the Neo 2, and, uh, yeah, these trackers are no exception. With pretty much every update that's come out since launch, the patch notes specifically cite improvements to the estimation algorithm and a reduction in drift. And while I myself haven't really noticed an issue, it's because the trackers themselves were pretty good for me on launch. But I respect that they are still trying and putting the effort in to improve these things way past launch. And that's really what I wanted to get at with these trackers, is that Pico really has put the effort in to make something that stands on its own, separate from all the other options. Because yeah, if you compare them to Slime, they're worse. If you compare them to Vives, they're a lot worse. But for the Questy, for the person who doesn't have any full body, I think they're actually pretty good. I really respect Pico for taking VRChat seriously as a massive system seller rather than doing what Meta does of just ignoring it and creating a competitor. Bundling VRC Plus in with their new headsets, bundling the motion trackers in to specifically showcase their value against the Quest headsets. Hell, they even did a sponsorship in the Black Cat, and that shows knowing your target audience. But at the very least, it shows that they're desperate for something to make them stick out compared to Meta, and I'm thankful that it's not just insanely high specs or insanely high prices or some kind of other business related thing. No, they just make good standalone headsets which are good for social VR. I just wish that they'd do an eye tracking model that anyone could actually bloody buy and also that they weren't banned in the US, but to be fair the US is just kind of fucked right now so like, uh, it's not their fault. 
genuinely, whenever I'm recommending VR hardware to people, which happens surprisingly often, the main questions I ask are, do they want to play all VR games or just VR chat, which is genuinely a question worth asking these days, and do they already have a gaming PC or do they just have a phone, which is also unfortunately a question that you have to ask these days. So if like a lot of people that are only interested in playing VR chat, genuinely the Pico 4 with the motion trackers comes highly recommended from me. And then for everyone who wants something else, the Quest 3S is such an unbeatable value that it still comes highly recommended even as someone who does not like meta and wants to see competition. So that's my review of the Pico motion trackers, but I'm not done with them yet. Um, make sure to get subscribed because I've got some interesting things planned for these. First off, I'm going to be testing them with some games that I didn't have time to feature in this video. And then I've got some um, interesting experiments planned. Let's just say you're going to want to stay subscribed for that. Also, I forgot to mention uh, Vive One's full body is also cheap and affordable. I may do another video talking about those another time. But that's enough digging myself holes and future shit I need to do. Have a good night. Stay safe. Take care. Thanks for watching. I'm fucking done. Yeah.